programmers. Today we're going to make a little quiz in Unity and there's two different sounds and depending on whether or not you're hitting the correct or the incorrect answer on the, the same button could generate either a sound saying it's correct or a sound saying it's incorrect. So, um, you know, baby dogs or puppies, that's true. So I'll hit that and it makes a true sound. If I hit the same true button, but it's a false statement, I get a different sound. I'll do a couple more. There are 30 days in December. That sh if I hit false, that'll do the correct sound, but I'm gonna hit true. There are 31 days in January, that is true. So the same button will be making a different sound. And that's something that tripped up a few of my students, so I thought I'd make a video on that. So we're going to start creating a new project. So from Unity Hub, I said create a new project. I'm going to choose 2D. You could do this in 3D. And I'm going to give the project name uh, the name Quiz Game. And I'm going to pause because Unity takes a long time to get started. All right, and from my empty scene, I am just going to add four things. The first thing is going to be under the UI category. It's going to be text. That's where my question is going to appear. If it's the first time you've done anything in a project, you may see a pop-up. If you're using um, the Text Mesh Pro, I'm just going to import this. And then I'll be filling in the actual question in a script, but for now I'm just going to put the word question and I need to make sure that's going to be lining up um, somewhere where the user can see so you can drag this into the right position. Change font size and font color. Um, and then there's two other things I want to add on the canvas that was automatically generated for me when I put the question and those are two buttons for either uh, false or true buttons that the user can click on. I'm going to do text mesh pro buttons for both of those so I'll get one set up as far as the font size and uh, color and stuff and then I'll just clone it. Okay, so I've got two buttons. One, I set the text for the button to be false and I changed the font size to a little bit bigger. The other button I've got true. Um, I've got one question and I, I changed the font size there. So there's three different things I've added so far. They're all in a canvas. The next thing I wanna add is just an empty game object and this will be my game manager. This is where I'll attach the script that will do most of the work. So I'm going to do game manager and to this I'm going to add a component that is a new script. And um, I'm going to call this maybe quiz manager. It'll do all the heavy lifting. And to this I'm going to add two components. Um, so I'm still on the game manager selected. I want to add a, an audio source. Oh, let me spell audio correctly. We've got audio source. I want two of them, one for our correct answer and one for our incorrect answer. And I'm gonna uncheck mark play on awake. So we'll fill this in with sounds later, but I just want a placeholder for those two sounds. And where could you come up with sounds? Well, you could record them yourself, or I'm gonna go to a website that has some free game art and sounds. I went to the opengameart.org website and I did a Google search for correct sounds and I found a link that had both the wrong sound effect and the correct sound effect. So those seem nice, so I downloaded those and I'm going to drag those into the assets folder. All right, so let me look at my downloads folder and find the correct sound and drag that in and then the wrong sound. And for a bigger project, I do a little bit of organization and put all my sound files in a, a folder and all my scripts in a folder. But for this little example, I'm just leaving everything under assets. All right, so we're ready to start filling in the script. So I put, remember, under the, um, the game manager, I had this script, quiz manager. Double click on that. We can start filling that in with some useful content. So at the top of this, I'm going to put a couple serialized fields. So I've got serialized field and I'm going to make use of lists. So I like lists, they're container classes. In my first list, I'm going to put the different audio sources. 
and that's where I can put uh, my correct sound and my incorrect sound and fill those in. So I'll call that sounds and it'll start out as an empty list. We're going to end up dragging some things in there though. Um, the next serialized field that I want to add is going to be um, for that question. So it was a text mesh pro you um, user interface graphical user interface and if you don't if this is underlined in red like mine is then you probably need to add a using text mesh pro I abbreviate that okay so first every time you go ahead and start the scene we want it to fill in that question with a useful question I am just going to hard code my questions. You could read them in from a file, but I'm going to make another list with all of my little questions. So these I'll call them like they're statements that someone's going to say true or false to those. So we'll create a new list of strings and I'm just going to hard code those. So my first, I think, was something about a baby dog is a puppy. So I started with a true statement, and then a baby cat is a puppy. So I just so I could get some true and false statements in there. We'll just start with those two um, questions. And then when we start, we want to go ahead and fill in the first question. So I want to say that the question text text part should be statements, whatever my first element in the array is there. All right, that's enough to do. I, I like to test it quite often. So we'll go ahead and try that out. All right. And before I hit run, I renamed the, uh, um, the text their question and I want to make sure that when I select my game manager I have dragged in that question so it's hooked in so that's going to be updated when I hit play I'm wanting to see that question be updated to the first question in my list and it is okay so we now need these buttons to do something right now they don't do anything all right so back in here actually before hooking up the the sound for the buttons i want it to just keep advancing every time you ask a question to change the text right now we're set with just the first question out of um, all these statements here let me add some more placeholders so i'm going to say maybe like december has, has 30 days uh, december has 31 days so a true and a false there to practice with those buttons. And I'm going to create another field here, private field, that is the question number that we're on. So we start at question number zero, and every time somebody hits a button, we're going to advance questions. So I'm going to make a button pressed function, and I'm going to have you pass in either a one or a zero depending on whether the person clicked on the false or the true button. So we'll say zero is equal to false and one means the person hit the button that had true on it. All right, so in here, in this new function I added, and there's one more curly brace down here for the end of the quiz manager class. I'm gonna say your question number, we're gonna increase that by one. And then I'm also gonna say that the statement, the text is gonna be increased. So oh, the statement is gonna be the other side, not the beginning of the statement. So we wanna say that the question text text part is going to be updated to the next thing in my list. So let me hit save and try that out. All right, to try that out, I need both of these buttons to have an event that when somebody clicks on them, it's going to run the function that we just created. So the function is going to be the button pressed and the false is going to pass in zero and the true button, it's also going to have an event. Somebody clicks on it. It runs the game manager button pressed. But this time it's going to pass in a number one. So we can know if somebody hit true or false. Now, if we hit run, 
right now it doesn't matter whether you hit true or false either way it's going to advance the question so we start out with the first question then we go to the second question good and then we will end up crashing if we try to advance i got an argument out of range so we really should be doing some error checking and only advance if um if we actually have more questions to show so we could add in some error handling there but i'm going to go straight to the sound for right now so to know whether or not you got the answer correct i'm going to create another list and this is going to be a list of integers because we're passing in zero or one depending on what button we hit so the answers in this new list of integers i'm going to just hard code what the answers are going to be well my first question the baby dog um, is a puppy the answer to that is true so we would want somebody to have clicked on the button that had the true the next one was a false then a false, and then a true. So we've got an answer for every one of our questions. Uh, let's see, so down in here in our button press function, we could try to check and see if the number that they passed in matches what we thought the correct answer to the question was. So I'm gonna say if the number passed in is equal to answers, and it depends on which question number we're on and if that is true then i'm going to play so if they got it correct i want to play i'm going to say my second sound i forget which order i hooked those in um, but we'll see if this is work going to work the second sound in my list has the correct i think it does and the second one has the incorrect sound or the first one has the incorrect sound. So we'll go ahead and try this out. All right, before we hit play, I was a little confused about what sound was what. And it turns out I haven't hooked in either of the sounds yet. I copied the correct sound and the incorrect sound, but I need to drag those over. So my first audio source, I'm gonna have, have the wrong sound, and the second one's gonna have the correct sound. And as far as the quiz manager is concerned, it still thinks there are zero sounds in my vector. So I'm going to type in two there. And then I can say, well, the first one's the, the incorrect sound, the wrong sound. The second one's the correct sound. And then we're ready to try this out. I think I have an on awake for one of these. So it seemed like the second one, I forgot to get rid of that check mark. So when the, the uh, scene started, it played that correct sound effect. But now let's try, let me get this one wrong to try the other sound effect. Good, okay, and so it advanced the questions. Baby cat is a puppy, that's a false statement. So notice how that same button, depending on whether I get it correct or incorrect, is playing one of these different audio sources. Uh, December has 30 days. Let me get it wrong again. Um, let me get it correct. All right, so that is a little example of how to make a quiz game, and it's bothering me that we're getting this argument out of range exception. So let me add one little more thing for error handling. Okay, and we definitely want to get rid of the check mark play on awake for our correct sound. And I just added a little if statement around incrementing the question number and the text. So I want to say if the question number is less than the number of statements I have minus one because our array index starts at zero. Um, that's why I had to do the minus one. And just to help explain it, I put in a little debugging statement. So when we test it, um, if I hit a button, so I'm, my print statement says, well, the question number before we advance to the next question was zero and you have four statements. So it's, it was true that the question number was less than the count minus one. And then, then we advance and the question number is now one and we keep going. And then now what I like about 
putting that if statement is, is we can redo that last question and test both of the buttons. So error handling is a good thing. All right, I think this is a long enough video, but hopefully it will explain how you could have two different audio sources and make sure that you're using the correct one when you're clicking on one of your buttons in the scene. All right, happy programming.